All right, just wanted to share this really crazy news with you all about the Pope, Pope Francis, who runs the trillion dollar Vatican, uh, saying that uh, he urged, he's basically urging the poor to be restored their voice to dignity, and he's basically uh, saying to pray for the poor. Coming from that Pope, who runs the trillion dollar Vatican, like I said earlier. So, he wants people to pray for the poor. How about you give some of your trillions of dollars to the poor? See this Jesuitical, hypocritical doublespeak from the Vatican, from the Jesuit Pope Francis. Here's the article. Pope Francis urges the poor to be restored their voice and dignity. In view of the Catholic Church's Fifth World Day of the Poor, on November 14th, Pope Francis paid a private visit to Assisi on Friday to visit or to, to, to listen and to pray with poor people from around Europe. How about you give them the money, the billions of dollars you have at the Vatican? You know, the Vatican is lined with gold. How about you give them some of that? You know, because the Vatican... See, the Catholic Church is all about money. And I'm going to get to some scripture after this. Quote, May this meeting be open, may this meeting open all of our hearts to put ourselves in each other's disposal, to make our weakness a strength, to help continue the journey of life, to transform our poverty into wealth to be shared, and thus make the world better. Pope Francis made the call Friday morning at a meeting with some 500 poor people from around Europe at Assisi, the home of St. Francis in central Italy. It was a private visit of listening and prayer in view of Sunday's World Day of the Poor. Yeah, coming from the trillion dollar Vatican. The Vatican that has stocks in all the major banks, the Vatican that has stocks in pretty much almost all the major companies, that gets trillions of dollars. It's insane. On his arrival, he was given a cloak and a staff, symbols of a pilgrim, to the places of St. Francis to listen to his word, and sat the Basilica at Santa Maria Delegi Angeli, Holy Mary of the Angels, yeah, false Catholic goddess, uh, where St. Saint, Saint Francis understood his vocation and renounced the world in order to live in poverty among the poor. Oh yeah, so the Pope is going to use that guy as an example. The Pope is, is, lives in the Vatican, which is decked in gold and silver, like Revelation 17 talks about. Oh yeah, sure, you definitely have a lot in common with that guy. A guy who makes a vow of poverty to a guy who's worth trillions of dollars. Insanity. Jesuitical insanity. Uh, Pope Francis listened to the testimony of six poor people from Italy, uh, France, Poland, and Spain, needed for one another. Addressing them, Pope Francis says, Every one of us needs each other, and that even weakness, if experienced together, can become a strength that will make the world better. He expressed plain, a uh, pain that uh, presence of the poor are often seen as an annoyance and sometimes are blamed for poverty in the world, which is an insult. Instead, we should make a serious uh, examination of the consciousness of, conscience of our actions and on the injustice of certain laws and economic measures on the hypocrisy of those who want to enrich themselves e excessively. Oh, oh, oh yeah, coming from the Pope. Poverty want to enrich themselves excessively. Yeah, coming from the guy who's worth trillions. I, I keep saying that, but it's coming from the guy who's worth trillions of dollars who gets millions of dollars in, in uh, donations from Catholics, who owns all the major stocks. I mean, does, does it even resonate with some Catholics out there? Uh, Pope Francis is worth trillions of dollars, but he's complaining about people enriching themselves excessively. The Pope of all people is complaining that about that. Insane. Restoring the rights of, let me turn full screen. Restoring the rights of the poor. The Holy Father, um, that's the title of God. God the Father. John chapter 17, verse 11. God is called the Holy Father. God the Father. Not some fallible man. Let me show you the scripture on that. Let me just pull up the scripture so people know what I'm talking about. Because the Pope is, is a blasphemer. He gives himself the titles of God. John chapter 17, verse 11. Okay, this is the only time in the scriptures where the term Holy Father appears. And guess who it's referring to? Let's see who it's referring to. Uh, John 17, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, that I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, and that they may be one as we are. Okay, Holy Father. Who is it referring to? Jesus. Who is Jesus praying to? God the Father. Okay, Holy Father is the title of God the Father, not the Pope. But of course, the Pope is a blasphemer, and he exalts himself above God, just like the Antichrist. We read Daniel chapter 11, verses 27, sorry, 37 to 38, gives a perfect description of the Pope. 
Okay? Actually, I, I stand corrected. Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 to 38 gives a good description of the Pope. Also, Zechariah chapter, I think it's 11, verses 15 to 17 gives another good description of the Pope. He's the idle shepherd. Continuing, restoring rights to the poor. The Holy Father said it is time that the poor are given back their voice, that the eyes be opened to the, see the state of inequality in which the families live. Yeah, come from the trillionaire. Uh, that sleeves are to be rolled up, and so dignity can be restored by creating jobs. Quote, it is time to be scandalized once again uh, before the reality of children who are starving, reduced to slavery, tossed about in the water in the aftermath of the shipwreck, innocent victims of every sort of violence. Yeah, kind of like the Bible believers that your cult of Roman Catholicism burned at the stake. You know, everything he's saying, I could throw right back at him and say, wait a second, your cult does this. The Catholic Church is a satanic cult, plain and simple. Uh, what is it? So it is time for violence against women. If I'm, if I'm, time for time that violence against women ends, that they uh, be respected and not treated like bargaining chips. It is time that the circle of indifference be broken, so as to discover once again the beauty of encounter and dialogue. Unless we men and women learn learn to meet each other, he warned, humanity will head for a very sad end. Well, it's actually the Roman Catholic Church, which will be destroyed by God. Uh, the hope and per perseverance of the poor. It's the Roman Catholic Church that's going to be destroyed by God in the time of Jacob's trouble. So, yeah, this is going to be a sad end. It'll be for the Antichrist Roman Catholic Church. Pope Francis said he was impressed by the tremendous sense of hope of the poor, which gives way to holding out against every odd, marginalization, suffering, sickness, and loneliness. The lack of so many necessary things, he said, has not stopped you from seeing the eyes filled with gratitude and the little things that have enabled you to be to hold out. The strength to keep going against the current, uh, against the current, despite every odd, he said, requires the courage to break a new path, knowing it will bear fruit. We do not face we do not face difficulties alone, but together, and only together can we overcome them without giving into temptation and to, to give up and to fall into loneliness or sadness. Oh yeah, I mean again, just the hip hypocrisy of the Pope of all people saying this, the guy who runs the billions billions and billions of dollars at the Vatican. Insane. I keep repeating myself because this is just literal insanity how people just can't see this. I mean. It's right in your face. The guy's worth trillions of dollars and he's telling you, lecturing you about praying for the poor. Pope Francis drew attention to the simplicity of heart and saint and life of Saint Francis, which he said is most more powerful than preaching. He recalled an episode where Saint Francis and Brother Maceo on a journey go uh, to go to France and beg for food, despite the poverty in, oh but beg for food. Uh, where is that in scripture? To beg for food? The Bible says if you don't work you shouldn't eat. Let me pull up the scripture on that. If you don't work you shouldn't even eat. Okay, where in where scripture do you beg for food? Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. So yeah, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. Okay. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an sample unto you to follow us. Even as when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Yeah, that's 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. If you don't work, you shouldn't be eating. You don't go around begging for food. If we work for you, food, you work for your wages. I have a job, okay? I work, I, do, I earn my wages, okay? I don't just go around begging for food. That's not scriptural. But of course, the Catholic Church has forsaken the commandments of God for their man-made traditions. Despite the poverty and lack of, oh yeah, I already read that. Uh, it is hard bread. They collected a great treasure, saying it was a gift of providence, quote, knowing how to be content and with the little we have and to share it with the others. The Pope said, it is a lesson St. Francis teaches us. St. Francis. The Bible says all believers are saints. You read the Pauline epistles, every believer is a saint. You know, there isn't some kind of special saint class for just saints only and then the, the average believer is, you know, the, the typical laity. No, every believer is a saint. You read... Just read the beginning of every Pauline epistle. Paul addresses the churches as the saints. Okay, every believer is a saint. If you're a, you're a saved Christian, you're a saint. You're a saint of God. But of course, the Catholic Church again has forsaken the commandments of God for their traditions. Repairing the Lord's house, drawing attention to the portun 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 Am I saying that right? A tiny chapel inside the basilica that Saint Francis restored after Jesus asked him to repair the house. The Pope said. The Lord is asking is was asking him to give his life to renew, to renew not 
the church made of stone, but one made of persons, of men, and of women who are living, or who are the living stones of the church. See, they always put it about the church, never about Jesus Christ. It's always about, oh, your service to the church, you know? Never about your service to Jesus Christ. Sorry, my voice cracked there. The Pope said the poor were gathered in the church to ask the Lord to hear their cry of help. Their marginalization they suffer is from is a spiritual one. Many people find time to help the poor and bring them food and hot beverages. But what brings more joy, he said, is that these volunteers stop and bit stop a bit and speak with those people and sometimes pray with them. Well, you see, uh, Pope Francis, you're worth trillions of dollars. How about you can give him some of the money, some of the billions of dollars that you own? You know, how would you do some of that? Okay. And I'm not going to read the whole article. It's just, it, it just typical Jesuitical doublespeak about how we're going to, you got to pray for the poor, you got to serve the poor, but we're worth trillions of dollars and we're going to keep that all for ourselves. Typical Jesuitical doublespeak. Don't be deceived by the Roman Catholic Church. Let me just end off with a few more scriptures I wanted to cover. Uh, because they like to claim that Peter was the first pope. Well, Peter was not rich. Okay. It was Peter, let's see how much money Peter owned. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Doesn't seem like Peter was uh, sitting in gold palaces with, you know, uh, his own private security detail and everything like that. And, and you know, just worth trillions of dollars. He, had, he said, Silver and gold have I none. Acts chapter 8 verse, uh, Acts chapter 8. Where is it? Acts chapter 8. I believe it's. Uh... Here it is. Acts chapter 8, verse number 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that, that, that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Okay? Peter didn't accept money. He didn't accept because Simon the sorcerer was wanting to pay him with the gift of God. Peter was all about the faith. Okay, Peter. You know, obviously donation to a ministry is scriptural, okay? Donation supporting a ministry financially is biblical, okay? Uh, I believe it's First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13 to 14 talks about that. But Peter was not this trillionaire who had private security and, and walked in gold palaces and that kind of stuff. No, Peter did not accept money when it was not in a scriptural sense, okay? Peter was humble. Peter did not accept worship. You can read Acts chapter 14, verses 11 to, I believe it's verse 15, and Acts chapter 10, verse 25 to 26. Peter did not accept worship like the Pope does. But of course, the Roman Catholic Church is not Christian. It's a pagan cult. Don't be deceived by the Roman Catholic Church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.